Did you know that in Fusion, you can make changes on the fly in the live model to the sketch, but also to the feature? Let's talk about the different ways you can. Have you ever needed to tweak a design, but you found yourself like digging through the menus and digging through the different sketches and features to make these changes? Well, in a recent video, I showed that there's a way to show all your sketch dimensions. This is a really cool trick. I really like this. I used to do this in SolidWorks all the time. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose show dimension. And I just showed the dimensions on my different sketches over in the browser. So now if I double click and make this 65, it updates. If I make this 10, it's going to get smaller. So you can see that you can make the des these design changes really quickly with the live model there without having to right click or double click on a sketch, edit it, make the change, hit update. You can avoid all that and you get that immediate feedback, which is really satisfying. Now, what's frustrating about this is we're missing all of the features. So, for example, this feature has a depth and we're not able to edit that on the fly using this show sketch method. So let's talk about how you can do that. The first method is what's called the direct editing method. And so you can use Q or push pull. So I'm going to hit Q. And I'm going to select this face. And what this is going to do is give you some options over in this offset face dialog. And what this is allowing me to do is I can attempt to modify the existing extrude and I can drag it or put in a value. You can see we're increasing this without adding a new feature to the timeline. We just changed it as if we went in and edited. I love this. This is super cool. Some other things you can do, you can hit Q and then click on a fillet and try to increase it, but you'll probably want to select these other fillets. But one limitation I've bumped into is that modify existing, the one that we just did. Sometimes this doesn't work for me. And so I have to do a new offset and that works. That almost always works, but it will add a new feature to the timeline. Let's try it. So I'll hit new offset, drag it a little bit, hit OK. It just added a new feature to the timeline. Direct edit also has some cool advantages with holes. If you select a hole and hit delete on your keyboard, um, it's using direct edit to delete that, fill back in that surface geometry for you, which is really cool. But let's get back to the topic at hand, which is how do we make changes to all these sketches and features in a nice, easy way. So how do we now show everything, sketches, features together, go up to modify, come down and find change parameters. This will bring up this table. You can resize the table so it can be sort of out of your way or adjustable for you to where you can still maybe see your model and work with it while you make these changes. So as you expand this, you can see all of these sketches and feature names. If you renamed them to something that makes sense, like the top body or the, you know, the, the rail or the lower tab or lower extrude, whatever, that'll make um, understanding the dimensions even easier for you. So I'll come to the first extrude and let's make this 20. Click away. You can see that just resized right then. And then come down, find some other values like this value, make this one 10. Click away and you can see it update. So this is really cool. I'm sorry, my table is kind of small because I've got everything enlarged, but you can hopefully get the idea that if you go through the different sketches and features, expand them, you can simply change the values. Now I do have automatic compute turned on and I've noticed that if I made this, let's say, you know, 50, I can't undo it in the dialogue. Oh, there it is. Hey, I stand corrected. So um, just hit that value. It'll bring it back. Awesome. Uh, Control Z, <laughs> Command Z does not work, but very cool. I'm relieved to find that. You can actually undo it right here, or you can accept it and hit Control Z uh, right now and undo that last step. Now, the one challenge I want to be mindful of for all of you out there, if you have a massive design, so this has what, roughly 10 features and 10 sketches, it's not that intense. I totally respect that if you've got a heavy file 
with a full timeline, a lot of patterns, a lot of compute time, this is not going to be nearly as quick or as easy to navigate all of your sketches and features. But you can come in and filter. You can um, see all of them here. So this is a decent option in trying to navigate. I just want to be respectful that I know on really complex parts with a lot of stuff going on, it can still be very challenging to navigate everything. Now, one thing that I kind of glossed over was, was how do we find these sketches and how do we find these features if we're not necessarily looking at them in that parameters list? For example, if I click on this lower extrude, you'll notice down in the timeline these little triple hashes right over this extrude. If I right click, I can see that that is the extrude that I was concerned about. I can drag and toggle the extrude value and update it. If I were to come in and click on this fillet, the right on the face, it shows me it's this fillet one. That's when that was created. So when you hover over a sketch entity um, or a face, you're going to get, generally, you're going to get those sketches and features. I'm getting the sketch in the timeline when I clicked on this little sketch profile or the interior. So that's a way to find things in your timeline. Another important thing that when it comes to trying to reorient yourself with a design like this one maybe it's been a year since you've touched it or maybe this is someone else's file that they shared with you and you want to understand how did i build this thing again what i like to do is just come down to the timeline and click this play button and so what i do when i hit play it walks me through kind of quickly how i sketched and built this in steps with extrudes and fillets and everything okay great now i can do this one at a time to go slow so I can go at my own pace. I can do this little right arrow right here. The far right will take you to the end. This takes you one at a time. So that allows me to kind of go at my pace and understand how I built this. Oh good, that's what I was looking for. I want to now edit it. I'll right click and edit and start working on it. Now we just talked a lot about sketches and features, but what about an assembly? I have a pretty simple assembly here with a series of components. Um, this was a skeleton sketch where I started with one big sketch and used that to make all of my components. Does the Do these methods work? Absolutely. It works exactly the same way. So when you click this face, it's telling me that it was it's this extrude that is part of this component. So it's actually highlighting it all over the place. And if we go to the parameters, it's going to work exactly the same way, but you still have to expand at the component level so i can expand the component then expand the the features and see those dimensions or wake up the sketch and then wake up the dimensions hey so i hope this one helps you edit your designs just a little bit faster and hopefully you can get the benefit of putting all those dimensions and constraints on and now you can edit them a lot faster with your model right there on the fly i'll see you guys in the next video